Sierra S, which proved its prowess at the racetrack and its incredible traction in adverse weather conditions. No matter the application, every 911 has astonishing acceleration, especially when the gleefully good launch control is utilized. At our test track, the GTS model bolted to 60 miles per hour in just 2.8 seconds when equipped with the 8-speed automatic. With the 7-speed manual, the 911 GTS delivered a slightly slower 3.2-second result in the same test. Porsche's optional sport exhaust system also helps enhance the experience by providing a fuller engine note. Best of all, the 911 is as comfortable as ever and also better to drive. Its steering is communicative and brilliantly direct, and the coupe and convertible have increased cornering grip and stability. The ride quality is surprisingly supple, too, despite the 911's amazing body control, which allow drivers to seamlessly switch between relaxed and spirited romps. Fuel Economy and Real World MPG With EPA ratings of 18 miles per gallon city and 25 highway, the Carrera S with a manual transmission is the most fuel-efficient 911. However, other 911 models' fuel economy estimates don't drop much farther from those figures. On our 75 miles per hour highway route, a Carrera and Carrera S, both equipped with automatics, earned impressive results of 33 and 30 miles per gallon, respectively. For more information about the 911's fuel economy, visit the EPA's website. Interior, Comfort, and cargo. The 911's interior continues to look sophisticated rather than complicated, with a mix of buttons, knobs, and touchscreen controls, and, for the first time ever, a large center cup holder. The gauge cluster also deviates from history, ditching the mainly analog instruments for mostly digital ones. While these screens have some user experience issues, and can be blocked by the steering wheel, the central tachometer still uses a physical needle that follows the engine's revs towards its heavenly 7,400 RPM redline. The 911's low-slung driving position and supportive front seats are fantastic, and the steering wheel has a wide range of adjustment. We only wish Porsche used less piano black trim on the center console, provided more interior cubby storage, and gave this icon of a car a grander shifter than the stubby flipper that comes on automatic equipped models. Although the 911 continues to offer seating for up to four in theory, the tiny back seats remain as hostile to adults as they were when 911s first hit the road in the mid-1960s. Infotainment and Connectivity Every 911 is outfitted with a 10.9-inch touchscreen integrated into the middle of the dashboard. In addition to voice commands and buttons on the steering wheel, the center screen also features rotary push-button controls on the console. The infotainment system supports a Wi-Fi hotspot, wireless Apple CarPlay, and wired Android Auto. Porsche does provide two high-end surround sound systems, that include a 12-speaker Bose unit and a 13-speaker Burmester stereo. Safety and driver assistance features. The 911 is available with myriad driver assistance technologies, including desirable options such as automatic high beams, blind spot monitoring, and even night vision. For more information about the 911's crash test results, Visit the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, and Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, IHS, websites. Key safety features include Standard forward collision warning and automated emergency braking Available lane departure warning and lane keeping assist Available adaptive cruise control Warranty and maintenance coverage Porsche's warranty coverage is standard for the segment, with a first maintenance visit covered free of charge. However, 
Rivals such as the Jaguar F-Type offer more value by covering maintenance for up to five years. Limited warranty covers four years or 50,000 miles. Powertrain warranty covers four years or 50,000 miles. Complementary maintenance is covered for one year or 10,000 miles. Hello, welcome TB Car Reviews Channel. 2022 Ram 1500 TRX Test Drive Review It's hard not to gush about the TRX. After all, this is the truck of our off-roading dreams. Yes, the Ford Raptor https colon slash slash www.fourwheelparts.com slash the dash dirt slash 2021 dash four dash raptor dash first dash drive started the factory high performance off-road truck trend back in 2010 and in its current form the raptor is an incredibly potent and capable package but the trx is in another league thanks to the wild 700 and two horsepower supercharged V8 under its hood. It's downright bonkers. Here is a massive full size truck with a long travel suspension riding on 35 inch tires that can scorch the pavement to 60 miles per hour in under four seconds. That's not just impressive, it's pure insanity. Our buddy Harry Wagner tested the beast https colon slash slash www.fourwheelparts.com slash the dash dirt slash first dash drive dash 2021 dash ram dash 1500 dash trx dash hits dash the dash dirt almost two years ago at ram's first drive media event and that drive proved the engineers that developed the trx designed it for abuse too Wagner wrote, Ram not only let us jump the trucks at the track, they actively encouraged it. Since then, the TRX has been an enormous hit for Ram. Want proof? Despite the truck's eye-watering $70,000 base price and more than $90,000 fully loaded sticker price, dealers are still able to tack on steep markups. And these trucks still scoot off the showroom floor. The TRX is an easy sell. The TRX is so compelling, we wanted to get some seat time with the truck on our own turf. So we borrowed a 2022 model year TRX, $91,725, to find out how it performs when subjected to our usual test drive schedule on the streets of LA and in the trails up at Hungry Valley SVRA in Gorman, CA. Not long ago, we spent time with a 2021 Ford Raptor on 37-inch tires. So we wondered, is the TRX really still the truck to beat? With memories of that red Raptor seared in our skull, we fired up that high-strung supercharged Hellcat V8 and hit the dirt. The Hardware One of the most interesting things about the Ram TRX is how little the truck shares with a standard issue 1500 beneath the skin. Ram says 75% of the chassis system is unique compared to other light duty Rams. The frame itself is upgaged and there are additional reinforcements everywhere. It's so different that the wheelbase is slightly altered too, less than an inch, just to make sure those big tires can fully stuff into the fenders. And speaking of fenders, like its arch rival at Ford, the TRX has massively blistered sheet metal to cover the tires and widen track. After all, the TRX is a full 8 inches wider than a normal Ram 1500. These fenders look a little boxier compared to the ones on the Raptor, and thanks to that massive hood scoop, gives the TRX a menacing maw. And that scoop not only helps feed the big V8, but it has serious dirt filtering capability. No surprise that the TRX's front and rear suspension systems are key to its performance. Up front, there are new forged upper and lower A-arms that provide 13 inches of wheel travel. Overall, the suspension is 3 inches wider and provides a 2-inch lift over a Ram 1500. 
The TRX specific half shafts use a sliding design so that they can accommodate the extreme angles of wheel travel. Damping is handled by Bilstein's new 2.6 inch Blackhawk E2 active dampers that changes characteristics based upon the mode selected in the cab. The shocks can modify tuning for compression and rebound throughout the entire suspension stroke. The front diff is the same 8.5 inch open unit found in other Ram 1500s. So the front axle relies upon brake based traction control to limit tire slip. To slow this monster down, the TRX has giant 15 inch discs at each corner. In the rear, the Ram's 5 link coil sprung suspension gets a thorough makeover as well. The links are longer and have TRX specific mounts compared to a normal 1500. From maximum bump to droop, the suspension has 14 inches of movement. The TRX has the same Bilstein dampers here plus an additional one on top of the axle to help control axle rep. The Bilsteins have a built-in system that acts like a bump stop of sorts with three zones of bottom out control. The rear axle is unique in the 4x4 industry. It is a special heavy duty full floating Dana 60 with a 10 inch ring gear and an electronic locking differential. It also comes loaded with rather tame 3.55 colon 1 gears. Imagine how hard this beast would launch with 4.10 colon 1s. The gears spin 18 by 9 inch wheels wrapped with 315 slash 65 are 18 Goodyear Wrangler territory tires. The heart of the TRX is under the hood. And what lies beneath that scooped hood is unlike any engine in any other pickup. It's easily the most potent truck engine ever offered. The 6.2 liter supercharged V8, otherwise known as the Hellcat, powers many impressive Dodge cars and SUVs like the Challenger, Charger and Durango. Here this Hellcat makes 702 horsepower at 6100 RPM and 650 lbft of torque at 4800 rpm. It comes hooked to an 8-speed automatic and is channeled through a 2-speed Borg Warner 48 to 13 transfer case with 2.64 colon 1 low range. But here's the unique thing, this truck is all-wheel drive all the time. That's right, there is no 2WD mode. Just street friendly all wheel drive that can vary torque between the front and rear axle. In auto mode, the split is 40 colon 60, as well as a choice of high range and low range with a traditional 50 colon 50 torque split. As much as we'd like to rip some smoky tire burnouts in the TRX, and burnouts would be way easy, all wheel drive has two benefits. It makes sure the power is turned into traction and it keeps the stress levels lower on those drivetrain components. When it comes to flex and clearance, how does the TRX stack up against its rival, the Raptor? Well, that depends upon which Raptor you're testing. Our buddy Dan Edmonds, https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch question mark v equals sign jcx vndm one s 0 ramped a TRX and found it to score an RTI of 602 on his ramp. For Wheeler tested a 35 inch tire Raptor, https colon slash slash www.motortrend.com slash reviews slash 2021-4-f-150 Raptor dash wins dash pickup dash truck dash of dash the dash year and it flex slightly better at 617. But that's so close, it's pretty much a wash when it comes to real world articulation. However, if you go for the 37 inch tire Raptor, which limits some of that suspension movement to keep those big tires out of the fenders, it will flex less. Edmonds found the Raptor with 37's ramp to 537, 
https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch question mark v equals sign 6 vc jkys 0 4 ri we measured a foot of clearance under the front diff and 10.5 inches under the rear axle of the trx the 37 inch tire raptor we last tested had about two inches more clearance up front and about a half inch better in the rear the TRX has an approach angle of 30 degrees, a departure angle of 23.5 degrees, and a breakover angle of 21.9 degrees. The last Raptor we tested, with 37-inch tires, had an approach angle of 33.1 degrees, departure angle of 24.9 degrees, breakover of 24.4 degrees, all better numbers. The TRX can handle a payload of 1,300 pounds and tow at 8,100 pounds. Trailer. And those specs are nearly the same for the Raptor. If there's another 4x4 that's more fun to drive on the street than this one, we haven't driven it. Yes, the Wrangler 392 clocks in with a close second. But nothing can match the thrust or the thrill of this Ram. It's just plain lunacy. Car and driver prove just how quick these trucks can be, hitting 60 miles per hour in 3.7 seconds and covering the a quarter mile in 12.3 seconds. Those are sports car numbers to be sure. And the accompanying supercharger wine mix with the wild cracks, pops and growls from the exhaust is a soundtrack every truck fan can enjoy. But the engine isn't even the best part. It's the suspension. The TRX's suspension is velvety smooth on any road surface. Our notes on ride quality said, Better than Raptor! Multiple times. The Ram and Bill Stein engineers have really nailed the calibrations here. And even though the ride is soft, it doesn't feel ponderous on the street. The truck doesn't wallow around on its suspension when you hit a corner either, especially in sport mode which really cinches down the suspension. That mode also wakes up the transmission with more aggressive shifts and adds some half to the steering. If this were our truck, we drive it in sport mode all day long. Rem offers one of the best full-size pickup interiors, period. And because our TRX was loaded with options, it came with all the goodies inside including leather ventilated seats. Our truck also featured an upgraded console with nicer materials, including a suede-like covering as well as upscale dash padding. The 12-inch Uconnect display is standard here and works flawlessly. If you're looking for a flashy interior with splashes of bright colors, and over-the-top logos. This is not your truck. The TRX's interior is handsome and subtle. There are a few TRX badges around the cabin, but for the most part, the mood is understated and cool. On the freeway, the TRX's cushy ride quality continues. And as long as you don't dig too deep into the throttle, the Ram is fairly quiet too. The torque reserves here are unlike anything we've experienced in a light-duty truck. The TRX just absolutely cooks with such little effort. On most highways it will loaf along at 1,600 RPM at 70 miles per hour. And the torque is there to propel the ram up most grades without the need to downshift. But what's really fun is to lay into the throttle here and see the speedometer climb like nothing else. This truck just pulls so hard, it's no surprise the top speed had to be governed at 118 miles per hour. The TRX would probably pull all the way to 150 miles per hour. As one might expect, the TRX guzzles fuel at an alarming rate. The EPA rates the TRX at 10 miles per gallon in the city and 14 miles per gallon on the highway. In our testing we saw 9.8 miles per gallon which is worse than the last Raptor we tested, 13.8 miles per gallon. So, be prepared for all that fun to put a dent in your wallet at the pump. 
on the trail. Our first impression of the TRX in the dirt? This is one of those few machines that allow you to drive straight from the pavement to some fairly challenging off-road obstacles without touching a button or moving a lever. A TRX in its default all-wheel drive mode is insanely good off-road. The suspension's impressive articulation and supple tuning keep the tires in contact with the trail. And thanks to the beastly motor, the TRX can tackle events that would stop most other stock 4X4S, even in low range. Unlike some modern four-wheel drive vehicles, the TRX's transfer case buttons are easy to find and easy and work quickly. Similarly, the TRX's drive modes, auto, sport, tow, custom, mud slash sand, rock and Baja, can be accessed by a button or on the infotainment screen. There's enough space to show exactly what changes when you swap modes. And those large virtual buttons on the screen are perfectly suited to toggling between modes while bouncing around off-road. In rock mode, with a transfer case in low, the TRX makes short work of moderate trail obstacles. Just lock that rear axle, and the Dodge can creep through deep gullies and larger moguls without breaking a sweat. The deep torque reserves of the supercharged V8 allow the TRX to crawl as if it had another set of low-range gears. The roughest sections that max out articulation at both ends require the traction control to help up front to limit wheel spin. And it does an admirable job. But it would be helpful to have a limited slip like the Raptor or a true locker. There were several instances where we attempted to climb an obstacle and the climbing tire would spin first, causing us to have to readjust our line. On our standard test hill, the TRX had plenty of traction to crawl to the top without drama. We had the truck in rock mode with the rear end locked and the TRX could claw its way up with just a bit of tire spin from the front end. On some less rutted climbs, we could dig deeper into the power band and let the RPMs fly. Boy is this truck fun. We could imagine the TRX would absolutely dominate a muddy Midwest hillclimb. The TRX is certainly adept at crawling, but it's naturally in the higher speed terrain that this beast truly shines. You can tackle the steepest motocross style whoops at around 20 miles per hour. Most of the 4X4S we test here can barely make it into the teens. Overall, the TRX felt better suited to this punishment than the Raptor we last tested. The damping control is simply exquisite. We never felt a harsh bottom out. On smaller, more spaced out bumps, the TRX simply eats them alive. But the best part about it is that the ride and handling feels so controlled. Baja mode is perfectly calibrated. You can pile on the kind of speed that makes you ask yourself, Do I need a roll cage here? The answer is probably. If we owned one of these trucks, we'd be tempted to cage it. Deep sand is no match for the TRX. Just make sure you disable the stability control and you can dive right in with the truck in auto mode. Because the TRX is full-time all-wheel drive, there's no loss of traction driving from street to sand. But for the most fun, you're going to want to shift into Baja mode. It absolutely transforms the experience. The TRX becomes a point and shoot sand weapon. Nothing you can buy off the showroom floor can accelerate out of a deep sand hole like the TRX. It's absolutely bonkers. It pulls so hard in sand that it feels like a modified vehicle. Need a pickup to take to the dunes on a regular basis? This is it. On the rough road section of the park, the TRX wasn't as comfortable as we would have imagined. On this day, the track was much more chewed up than it normally is. So we had to keep the speeds down somewhat. We could feel the body and chassis shaking a bit as we touched 35 miles per hour. 
but on this day on that road, a normal 4x4 would be struggling at 20 miles per hour. So the TRX does allow more speed on really choppy terrain than any other rig we've tested. And on the milder dirt roads, the TRX just melts the washboards. The bottom line. If we had a choice of any new truck to use for off-road fun, the TRX would absolutely be that truck. It's not only good at everything from a technical standpoint, but it's also more entertaining than any other 4x4 when it comes to high speed for wheeling. Okay, our test truck does cost $91,725. And that's a lot to spend on any 4x4. If you could find one, a base TRX is $72,390, which strikes us as a deal. And that's especially true considering when the last Raptor we tested cost $82,000 and change. The TRX feels like it should be more expensive than the Raptor largely because it just doesn't have the motor to compete. Yet. But the Raptor is coming. And as soon as we know more, we'll let you know. Hello, welcome to BT Car Reviews Channel. 2022 Toyota Tundra TRD. Toyota has had its sights on the domestic full-size pickups for decades. At first, it was a cautious approach. Remember the T100? While it was a step in the right direction, the T100 was more mid-size than full-size and used many components from the compact truck. Plus, it came with AV6 instead of AV8. So it was less appealing to buyers looking for full-size metal. The first Tundra came in 2000. And although it had huskier styling, it was the same basic size as the old T100. The new Tundra had one important upgrade to make the industry take note. An optional 4.7 liter V8 with 245 horsepower. Thanks to that V8, the new Tundra could tow more. 7,200 pounds. It was quicker and rode better thanks to the coil springs replacing the T100's torsion bars up front. And this generation of Tundra has proven to be incredibly robust and long-lasting. Even though it was an excellent truck, it was still too small to compete with the American big boys. After years of having that small pickup complex, Toyota decided to get serious. So in 2007, an all-new Tundra launched. And it was supersized. This was a massive truck that could stand shoulder to shoulder with any domestic. And with sales of over 200,000 that first year, it seemed like they had the right formula. This beefy American-made beast had a strong 5.7 liter V8, a massive 10.5 inch rear axle, and the ability to outtow everyone. It was a great truck and has had a loyal following amongst off-roaders. But after years without a significant update, the Tundra was getting a little tired. A TRD Pro model arrived in 2015 with a bit more dirt prowess, but sadly without a locking rear differential, like the competition. Sales basically stalled at around 120,000 trucks per year. It was time for some fresh metal. The 2022 Tundra is all new from nose to tail and packs some interesting innovations too. The most off-road capable model is still the TRD Pro and this time, it's got a locker. The Pro comes only as a V6 hybrid and only as a crew max with a 5.5 foot bed. So we borrowed a $68,925 TRD Pro drenched in solar octane for some testing on the trails at Hungry Valley SERA in Gorman, CA as well as the streets and highways around LA. Let's find out if it's the right truck for you. The hardware. The Tundra rides on an all new chassis. But this frame and suspension architecture isn't just for pickups. The Tundra chassis uses Toyota's innovatively named new global architecture F, Team GF, and it's a system of parts that is common to the new Toyota Sequoia 
and land cruiser not available on our shores. SUVs as well as the land cruiser she cousin, new Lexus LX600. A modified version will reportedly underpin the new Tacoma for Runner and Lexus GX2. It seems likely that in the future, the commonalities of chassis parts between all these vehicles could make for easier swapping as well as the development of aftermarket parts. But time will tell. The Tundra's cab and bed are made from high-strength steel with the exception of the aluminum hood and front door panels. The cab is mated to the frame with hydraulic mounts to dissipate vibrations. The Tundra's new frame system uses a relatively conventional coil spring independent double A arm front suspension. And because this is the Pro, there's a 1.1 inch lift over other Tundras with damping handled by 2.5 inch Fox internal bypass dampers and remote reservoirs. There's also a beefy and very red TRD Pro front stabilizer bar. It's all protected by a massive aluminum skid plate. Other manufacturers should really take notes from TRD when it comes to skid plates. These are excellent parts. Out back, the Tundra ditches the old school leaf springs for a multi link coil spring suspension. The TRD Pro model uses Fox dampers here too. But the biggest upgrade for Pro trucks is, finally, an electronic locking rear differential. That's a cornerstone of any good off road package so we're pleased it's included. All Tundras carry a fairly modest 3.31 to 1 axle ratio. The Tundra's old 5.7 liter V8 was an absolute gem of an engine. It always felt like it produced more power and torque than the numbers suggested. The big V8 developed 381 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and 400 and one LBFT of torque at 3,600 RPM. But it was thirsty and mated to a six-speed automatic. Well, V8S are history when it comes to the Tundra. But don't fret. Most Tundras will use a 3.5-liter twin-turbo iForce V6 with a solid 389 horsepower at 5,200 RPM and 400 and 79 LBFT of torque at 2,400 RPM. And the TRD Pro model has this engine married to a battery electric hybrid power pack, the iForce Max. The 48 horsepower, 184 LBFT of torque, electric motor is sandwiched between the V6 and the new 10-speed transmission. And there's a small 1.87 kilowatt hours nickel metal hydride battery pack mounted under the back seat. The result? The Max develops 437 horsepower at 5,200 RPM and a whopping 583 LBFT of torque at 2,400 RPM. Those are better numbers than any gas engine in a half ton, with the exception of the Raptor and TRX. The hybrid V6 and 10-speed automatic powertrain are mated to a 2-speed transfer case with a 2.64 colon 1 low range, the same gearing as the last Tundra. So, the crawl ratio for this big guy is 43 to 1, thanks to a deep 4.92 to 1 first gear. The Pro comes standard with 285-65 R18, 33-inch. Falcon Wild Peak all terrain tires and create 11 inches of ground clearance under the front skid plate and 9 inches under the rear axle. Those tires, combined with a small front end lift and unique fascia, produces an approach angle of 26.2 and a departure angle of 24.2. For comparison, the new GMC Sierra at 4X has an approach angle of 25.5 degrees and a departure angle of 23 degrees. And a Ford F-150 trimmer has an approach angle of 27.6 degrees and a departure angle of 24.3 degrees. So clearly, the Toyota is in the hunt amongst its peers 
when it comes to trail clearance. The TRD Pro hits the scales at 6,100 pounds, carry a 1,600 pounds, payload, and tow a rather impressive 11,175 pounds, trailer. That's a better towing capacity than any of the aforementioned off-road package full-size trucks. And there's more ability here than the last Tundra we tested. That 2015 Tundra TRD Pro weighed 5,860 and was rated to tow an even 10,000 pounds and handle 1,630 pounds in the bed. On the street, the V8 is gone, but we stopped missing it after about 10 minutes driving the new Tundra. This hybrid system is wickedly powerful, and there's torque everywhere. It's really fun, and really responsive too. Car and driver tested a pro, and found it to scoot to 60 miles per hour in just 5.7 seconds. That's quicker than the old Tundra and on par with a 6.2 liter Chevy or GMC pickup. But the F-150 trimmer smokes them all and can complete the deed in 5.3 seconds. Sport and Sport Plus modes are the ones to be in if you're looking for fun. And digging deep into the throttle delivers something new a really impressive impersonation of a V8 soundtrack. Yes, it's fake noise pumped in through the audio system. But honestly, it sounds pretty cool. On the highway and around town, the Tundra is reasonably smooth. The truck can maintain 70 miles per hour in most conditions, with the engine spinning at just 1,500 RPM. Introduce a hill or shift into sport mode, and the transmission drops a gear or two and revs rise to 2,000 RPM. But the torque is very impressive here. It feels like you could tow a serious trailer with this rig. Though the Pro is a hybrid, don't expect fuel economy to take center stage. Though rated at 17 miles per gallon city and 22 on the highway, on our test, we saw no better than 14 miles per gallon. Perhaps we spent a bit too much time digging into those power reserves. But it's certainly not all bad inside. The seats are very comfortable, and we like the leather-wrapped shifter and steering wheel. The four WD controls and drive mode selector switches are in the right spot too, right behind the gear shift. And we like the giant 14-inch touchscreen. A massive improvement over the old system. The navigation system is cloud-based and can actually store maps in case you travel to an area outside the coverage area. Neat. All hybrid models, not just TRD Pros, gain a 12.3-inch digital gauge cluster with selectable screens. Overall it's a fine, if somewhat strange interior compared to other full-size trucks. On the trail, the TRD Pro comes packing quite an advanced drivetrain. And we were certainly skeptical of its performance in the dirt. After all, the old V8 the TRD Pro model was really a blast to drive in the sand and in the higher speed bumps. How does this new one match up? Pretty well, actually. If you're looking for a full-size truck with an off-road package, that offers lots of articulation, this is not that truck. On four-wheelers ramp, a TRD Pro ramp just 436 while an F-150 trimmer scored weight flexier 557. One reason is for the lack of suspension movement that is clearly visible up front, a massive TRD front sway bar. We're not sure why an off-road package has a bar of that size but it probably doesn't help off-road. So without big reserves of suspension flex, having the rear locker on board really helps pick up the slack. And because of that, the Toyota did admirably well in slow speed terrain. Select low range and you can choose from several multi-terrain select, MTS, modes, auto, sand, mud and rock. In rock mode with a rear axle locked, 
we found the TRD Pro to be quite tenacious. There's more grip than one might think, and there's loads of torque right off idle from the hybrid system. Because the truck has fairly good clearance all the way around the body, we had a degree of confidence to try some more difficult obstacles. That said, the Tundra has a massive hood, and so outward visibility is rather poor. And that makes the Tundra tricky to place. This is one full-size truck that feels big on the trail. TR favorite hill climb, the Tundra was able to make it to the top with the rear axle locked in the NTS auto mode. It was a fairly smooth and uneventful drive. We fed in a bit of throttle and maintained 10 miles per hour sawing the steering wheel back and forth as the front tires would begin to momentarily lose grip. We then tried the hill driving as slowly as we could. With the MTS in rock mode, we crawled the hill at around 4 miles per hour and somehow never slipped a tire. The traction control calibration is excellent as is the grip from the Falcons. In the sand, we press the ESC button to turn off the stability control, engage sport mode, and had a bit of fun in 2WD. It just wanted to play here, sending big roosts skyward and fishtailing the rear end as we drove up the wash. Next, we tried 4WD in sand mode. It worked well putting down the power, but lost a bit of that hooligan spirit. At moments, it felt like it was in a gear too tall and would bog a bit. Other times it accelerates more like it did in 2WD. We can't explain what was going on. Perhaps it was the computers controlling the hybrid system getting a little funky? In any case, this truck could probably use a sort of sports sand mode, something more akin to Ford's Baja mode. On the higher speed fire road style trails, the Tundra was a mixed bag. The truck feels very heavy when you pile on the speed. And at just over 3 tons, it's a bit overweight for a light duty pickup. Push the truck hard and the cab tends to quiver slightly, though less than some in the class. The ride is not magic carpet smooth over this terrain, but there's enough damping in the Fox shocks to keep a fairly quick pace of 25 to 30 miles per hour. The bottom line. The all-new Tundra TRD Pro is a step forward in terms of technology and slow-speed off-road capability. Thanks to the hybrid powertrain, this beast is downright torquey. But overall, the Tundra left us wanting. It doesn't really surpass its rivals on any level. It's heavier than other light-duty trucks, and even though there's a hybrid system on board, fuel economy is fairly dismal. The truck might say, pro, but it doesn't have the suspension articulation to match. And on the inside, the truck is a little too funky for our tastes. The aftermarket has already been hard at work developing parts for the new Tundra. No doubt, a few of these faults can be fixed with a some upgrades. Hello, welcome to TB Car Reviews Channel. 2023 GMC Sierra 1500 Overview Full-size pickups are the top three best-selling vehicles in the U.S., and the GMC Sierra 1500 repurposes the guts of its mechanical twin, the Chevy Silverado, in an attempt to compete in the upscale side of the segment. Its massive configurability is your friend. The Sierra 1500 is available as a single cab, double cab, or four-door crew cab with beds ranging from 5.8 to 8.2 feet in length. Engine options include a 310 horsepower turbo four-cylinder, a Duramax turbo diesel with 460 pound-feet of torque, a 355 horsepower 5.3 liter V8, and a 420 horsepower 6.2 liter V8 with as much torque as the oil burner. The Sierra 1500 has the third highest conventional towing capacity of all half-ton pickups with a max rating of 13,200 pounds. Go ahead, 
towed at 747. While the Sierra's available 13.4-inch touchscreen is impressive, the rest of its interior, unfortunately, doesn't match the richer feel of the top-spec Ram 1500's cabin in terms of materials or quality of assembly. What's new for 2023? GMC UPS the Sierra 1500's off-road capability for 2023 with a new at 4X80 edition which features equipment from the folks at American Expedition Vehicles. This dedicated dirt purpose vehicle gets steel front and rear bumpers with recovery points, as well as a winch up front. Additional steel skid plates protect the underside of the front end, the steering components, the transfer case, the fuel tank, and the rear differential. The at 4 x AV edition gets gloss black 18-inch AV Salta wheels wrapped in 33-inch Goodyear Wrangler Territory MT tires. The at 4 x AV edition is an additional package available only on the off-road focus version of the at 4 x trim that was added for 2022. We like the Sierra Elevation trim level because it occupies a middle ground in terms of price, but comes with a desirable appearance package that looks cool. You'll also have to select between a few different cab configurations and bed lengths depending on what fits your needs. All-wheel drive is available at an extra cost should you require it. Engine, Transmission, and Performance The Sierra is available with four different engines two different transmissions, and rear or all-wheel drive. The base setup is a turbocharged 2.7-liter four-cylinder that makes 310 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. It pairs with an 8-speed automatic transmission. There are two V8 options, a 355-horsepower 5.3-liter and a 420 horsepower 6.2 liter. A torque rich diesel six cylinder generates 460 pound feet. All three engines hook up to a 10 speed automatic. At our test track, a loaded Denali Ultimate model with a 6.2 liter V8 hit 60 miles per hour in just 5.4 seconds. The Sierra 1500 also can be had with adaptive dampers and wheels as large as 22 inches. While the Sierra lacks the extreme off-road abilities of the high-flying Ford F-150 Raptor, it does offer two dedicated off-road variants. The rugged F-4 model boasts a 2.0-inch suspension lift and other legitimate equipment. The at 4 x shares exclusive features with the Silverado ZR2, including advanced spool valve dampers, electronic locking front and rear diffs, extra skid plates, and gnarly off-road tires mounted on black 18-inch wheels. And at 4 x AV package adds even more serious off-road accessories, like a steel front bumper with a winch, AV 18-inch wheels, and steel rock slider Sierra has a rougher ride than the Ram 1500, but it still handles remarkably well thanks to responsive steering and restrained body roll. Towing and Payload Capacity The half-ton GMC pickup can tow up to 13,200 pounds and support a payload up to 2,240 pounds when properly equipped. Fuel Economy and Real-World MPG the Sierra 1500 has several different powertrain combinations, which means its fuel economy ratings vary. Those most concerned with fuel efficiency should entertain the optional diesel engine, which is rated up to 23 miles per gallon city and 30 miles per gallon highway. However, most Sierras will be packing the 6.2 liter V8 that comes standard with every Denali model. It's estimated to earn up to 15 miles per gallon city and 20 miles per gallon highway when paired with all-wheel drive. The Sierra 1500 Denali we tested achieved 18 miles per gallon in our real-world highway test. For more information about the Sierra's fuel economy, visit the EPA's website. Interior, 
comfort, and cargo. Inside, the Sierra is designed with the driver in mind. The controls are all easy to reach, and the quality of the materials generally increases with the trim levels. Starting on the SLE, a 12.3-inch digital instrument panel becomes standard. Spending big on the upper trims unlocks even more desirable features, including a heads-up display and a power-adjustable steering column. The Denali Ultimate is where things get seriously upscale thanks to open pore wood trim and a surplus of leather-covered surfaces. The front seats also feature 16-way power adjustments as well as massage functions. Interior cubby storage is more than adequate for storing all manner of small items and stuff. While GMC doesn't offer any particularly innovative storage features, the Sierra 1500 can be had with a trick tailgate that has multiple configurations. There's also a class-exclusive carbon fiber reinforced cargo bed that is lighter and supposedly stronger than steel. Infotainment and connectivity. Most Sierra 1500s feature a 13.4-inch touch screen through which the truck's infotainment system runs. This larger screen includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. It also has built-in Google software that allows users to access an app store maps and a voice assistant. Other available features include a 12-speaker Bose audio system, wireless phone charging, and additional power points. Safety and Driver Assistance Features Overall Safety Rating NHTSA View Crash Test Results The Halfton Sierra has a host of standard driver assistance technology. It's also available with Nifty Off-Road Assists such as a terrain mode that allows one-pedal driving in low-speed situations. The GMC can be fitted with a multi-camera system that even has views where the driver can virtually see through a trailer if they're pulling one. The Denali can be equipped with GM Super Cruise Hands Free Driving Tech, which operates on a vast network of roads across the country, and can even be put to use with a trailer attached. However, It'll only change lanes on its own if there's nothing hooked up to the truck. For more information about the Sierra's crash test results, visit the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, and Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, IHS, websites. Key safety features include Standard forward collision warning and automated emergency braking. Standard Lane Departure Warning and Lane Keeping Assist Standard Blind Spot Monitoring and Rear Cross Traffic Alert Warranty and Maintenance Coverage GMC provides a competitive warranty plan that can't match the Nissan Titan's coverage, but does include one complimentary scheduled maintenance visit. Limited warranty covers 3 years or 36,000 miles. Powertrain warranty covers 5 years or 60,000 miles. Complimentary maintenance is covered for the first visit. Hello, welcome to BKM Car Reviews Channel. 2023 Maserati Levant Review When we think of Maserati, we conjure up images of powerful engines and loads of personality. The 2023 Maserati Levant lays claim to both. With Ferrari's horse turbo engines and classic Italian design touches inside and out, the Levant is both exotic and rare. Pricing starts at $90,700. What's not to like about an SUV that oozes tradition and sources thrust from a choice of two twin-turbo engines? Horsepower ranges from a healthy 345 horsepower to a whopping 572 horsepower depending on the Levant model. The offered leather or silk upholstery is interrupted with wood or carbon fiber accents. Also available are upscale luxury features like adjustable pedals, an Alcantara headliner, and a 17-speaker Bowers and Wilkins audio system that further enrich the experience. To feel good about the Levant, 
However, you must truly appreciate the traditional Italian experience it provides because you will pay dearly for it, more expensive by thousands than the lion's share of its competitors. The Levant also struggles to retain its market value as the years pass. Does that make it a bad choice? Not if you want its exclusivity and performance. However, if it's value you seek, you may want to look elsewhere. 2023 Maserati Levant Pricing The 2023 Maserati Levant starts at $90,700. With more than 20 mid-sized luxury rivals arrayed against it, the Levant is on the high end of the price spectrum. For example, the Land Rover Range Rover Sport, Mercedes-AMG GLE Coupe, and Porsche Cayenne Coupe are all thousands less. This may explain why the GT and Medina are the best-selling Levant models. Although the Maserati boosts the Medina's horsepower and beefs up its brakes, we would still stick with the GT and Pocket 10 Grand. Every Levant grade features the Q4 all-wheel drive, AWD system. You can save some serious cash and still stay with Maserati if you pick the smaller gray kale. It starts at $63,500. Here's the Levant lineup. 2023 Maserati Levant GT ninety thousand seven hundred dollars twenty twenty three maserati levant medina one hundred and one thousand four hundred dollars twenty twenty three maserati levant medina s one hundred and twenty seven thousand six hundred dollars twenty twenty three maserati levant trophio one hundred and sixty seven thousand dollars these are the manufacturer's suggested retail prices MSRP, and don't include the $1,495 factory delivery fee. Before buying a 2023 Maserati Levant, check the Kelly Blue Book fair purchase price to know what you should really pay. The Levant's resale value brings up the rear of the segment pack, along with the BMW X5 and Audi Q7. What's new for 2023? Maserati put the Levant through a mid-cycle makeover in 2021. Therefore, it rolls into 2023 unchanged. As of now, the Italian carmaker has remained mostly mum regarding Levant's future. However, we have heard rumors of an electric version on the drawing board for 2025 or 2026. Driving the 2023 Maserati Levant the Maserati Levant may be part of the Stellantis family, but this is no Jeep. Its architecture is similar to the Maserati Ghibli sedan, therefore, it has real athleticism at its core. This is a well-tuned chassis complemented by either a Ferrari Source turbocharged V6 or turbocharged V8. We rate the performance among that of the best SUVs. Although we love the raucous V8 in the Medina S and Trofeo, as well as the extra V6 output in the Medina, we'd stick with the GT. Why? Because even in its entry-level guise, we think it's a blast to drive. However, if your pockets are deep and you crave more power, move on up the model range. Every step up adds to the Levant's gusto. And that chilling V8 sound? We can't get enough of it. The all-wheel drive, AWD, system has a bias to the rear wheels, but it can send up to 50% of the power to the front wheels. Off-roading isn't the Levant specialty, but it can hold its own when the pavement runs out. That's thanks to an off-road mode and the standard Skyhook adaptive suspension system capable of raising the Levant's ground clearance. Italian Interior packed with premium materials like available Zegna silk and Pianofiori leather, the Levant's cabin is luxuriously furnished. However, you may be just as pleased with the interiors of less pricey competitors. For example, the Range Rover Sport. The front seats are plenty roomy, but the back seats are a little tight. 
you can comfortably fit two average-sized adults in the back, but most rivals in this class are roomier. The same goes for the cargo area, which is among the more modest in the segment. Looks like a Maserati. You will instantly recognize the Levant as a Maserati. In no small measure, that's because of the liberal use of the distinctive trident emblem sprinkled around the exterior. In front, a concave grille is flanked by a handsome light signature creating an exotic look. Elegant body lines and a sloping roofline give the Levant a sporty profile. We applaud the countless options for customizing the look of the Levant. There are several wheel options, and you can even choose between five different brake caliper colors. You may also select between a traditional chrome exterior trim or the darker Durissimo appearance package. The Levant is on the larger side of the midsize luxury SUV class. Its dimensions are similar to the Audi Q8, and it's a little bigger than the Porsche Cayenne, BMW X5, and Mercedes-Benz GLE class. Our favorite features and tech. Ferrari sourced engines. The stable of twin-turbo V6 and twin-turbo V8 engines breathe life into the Levant with impressive thrust and an intoxicating exhaust note. Skyhook suspension. Tuned for performance, this adaptive suspension can not only raise and lower the Levant but minimize dive when braking, body roll in corners, and squatting when accelerating. We found it also smooths out the ride. Adaptive matrix headlights. Automatically adjusting to various conditions, like high-speed driving and rain, these LED headlights also include high beam assist. Panoramic sunroof. A two-panel sunroof, it spans both rows of seats. Power adjustable pedals. We were able to find the most comfortable and effective driving position with these pedals that adjust, moving closer or farther away. Bowers and Wilkins audio system. Drawing on 1,280 watts, this 17-speaker system delivers you are in the room sound. Our only complaint, cranking it up drowns out the vibrant sound of the exhaust. Standard features. Maserati loads the base GT trim with lots of standard features. In addition to the twin-turbo V6 powering it and the Medina, it gets AWD. It also provides an active air suspension with five ride heights, including an easy entry mode, sport mode, and off-road mode. It's supported by the Skyhook Performance Suspension. Also standard are a limited slip differential, a dual pane sunroof, leather seats, heater, power adjustable front seats, 20 inch alloy wheels, a heated steering wheel, and more. In our test driving, we really appreciated the Maserati Intelligent Assistant Infotainment System. It features an 8.4 inch screen loaded with Android Auto. Apple CarPlay, and navigation. This is very similar to the Uconnect system found in other Stellantis vehicles, which we deem one of the best infotainment interfaces in the industry. Sadly, the Levant is stingy when it comes to standard safety and driver aid technology. Among today's wide variety of popular safety tech, Maserati only provides the Levant with front and rear park assist, blind spot monitoring, and rear cross-traffic alert. You must step all the way up to the Medina S to find forward collision warning and adaptive cruise control on the standard list. To add some additional performance, you need only move up to the Medina grade. For example, it comes with an upgraded version of the V6, making more power and torque than the GT. Other upgrades include sportier front and rear fascias, piano black exterior trim, staggered wheels, and upgraded brakes. Picking the Medina S model gains you the turbocharged V8 engine plus many more features like paddle shifters, adaptive full LED matrix headlights, and upgraded full leather upholstery. 
a Harman slash Cardon premium audio system, full speed adaptive cruise control, a surround view camera, automatic emergency braking, and traffic sign assist are also standard. Finally, the Levon hits its peak performance in the Trofeo model. In addition to the V8 making an extra 40 horsepower compared to the Medina S, other upgrades include a Corsa drive mode and carbon fiber interior trim. Piano Fiori leather upholstery, ventilated front seats, heated rear seats, 22-inch staggered wheels, soft closed doors, and Bowers and Wilkins premium audio system are also included. Factory options. Maserati offers many of the Medina, Medina S, and Trafio standard upgrades as options on lower trims. You may choose among many option packages and standalone options to personalize your Levant. For example, you can have Zegna silk and leather upholstery, Zegna Pelotesita leather upholstery, various appearance packages, multiple wood and carbon fiber interior trims, for zone climate control, and much more. Two twin-turbo engines. Your choice of twin-turbo engines delivers the Levant's Go. Both engines have two different versions available. The v 6 base GT model is the mildest in the lineup, but we found it still has plenty of muscle. The Medina trim is more sport-oriented, using a more aggressive version of the V6 engine. The mighty turbocharged V8 explodes onto the scene with the Medina S model. It produces over 500 horsepower. If you're looking for peak performance in a Maserati SUV, you'll want the Trofeo model, which adds an extra 40 horsepower over the Medina S. Although performance is a major strength of the Levant, the trade-off is lackluster fuel economy, even from the base V6 model. Although the Levant's mileage doesn't dazzle, it's not far off the pace of its segment. Every Levant uses an 8-speed automatic transmission and the Q4 all-wheel drive system with active torque control. 3.0-liter twin-turbocharged V6 GT, 345 horsepower at 5,750 RPM. 369 lbft of torque at 1,750 to 4,750 rpm. Fuel economy, 18 miles per gallon, 16 city, 22 highway. 3.0 liter twin turbocharged V6, Medina. 424 horsepower at 5,750 rpm. 428 lbft of torque at 2,000 to 4,750 rpm. Fuel economy, 18 miles per gallon, 16 city, 22 highway. 3.8 liter twin turbocharged V8, Medina S. 523 horsepower at 6,250 rpm. 538 lbft of torque at 2,500 to 5,000 rpm. Fuel economy, 16 miles per gallon, 13 city, 20 highway. 3.8 liter twin turbocharged V8, Trofeo. 572 horsepower at 6,250 rpm. 538 lbft of torque at 2,500 to 5,000 rpm. Fuel economy, 16 miles per gallon, 13 city, 20 highway. For year per 50,000 mile warranty. The 2023 Maserati Levant is protected by a four year per 50,000 mile warranty, including powertrain coverage, plus free roadside service. That coverage is about typical for the segment. KBB Vehicle Review and Rating Methodology Our expert ratings come from hours of both driving and number crunching to make sure that you choose the best car for you. We comprehensively experience and analyze every new SUV, car, truck, or minivan for sale in the U.S. and compare it to its competitors. When all that dust settles, 
we have our ratings. We require new ratings every time an all-new vehicle or a new generation of an existing vehicle comes out. Additionally, we reassess those ratings when a new generation vehicle receives a mid-cycle refresh, basically sprucing up a car in the middle of its product cycle, typically around the two to three years mark with a minor facelift, often with updates to features and technology. Rather than pulling random numbers out of the air or off some meaningless checklist, KBD's editors rank a vehicle to where it belongs in its class. Before any car earns its KBB rating, it must prove itself to be better, or worse, than the other cars it's competing against as it tries to get you to spend your money buying or leasing. Our editors drive and live with a given vehicle. We ask all the right questions about the interior, the exterior, the engine and powertrain, the ride and handling, the features, the comfort, and of course, about the price. Does it serve the purpose for which it was built? Whether that purpose is commuting efficiently to and from work in the city, keeping your family safe, making you feel like you've made it to the top, or that you're on your way, or making you feel like you've finally found just the right partner for your lifestyle. We take each vehicle we test through the mundane, parking, lane changing, backing up, cargo space and loading, as well as the essential, acceleration, braking, handling, interior quiet and comfort, build quality, materials quality, reliability.